Hi everyone, my name is Yun Qi Li. Today I'd like to introduce our work, User Oriented Fairness in Recommendation. First, I will introduce our motivation for doing this work. We know that as a highly data-driven application, recommender systems could be affected by data bias, resulting in unfair results for different data groups, which could be a reason that affects the system performance. Therefore, it is very important and necessary to identify and solve the unfairness issues in recommendation scenarios. Recently, there has been growing attention on fairness considerations in recommendation model, comparing with the sufficient work about solving the discrimination from items side in recommendations. Algorithm based existing on the user side has been rarely studied. In this paper, we consider unfairness issues between different groups of users regarding recommendation performance in commercial recommendation scenarios. The unfairness for users could result from the data imbalance, specifically due to the fundamental idea of collaborative filtering in most recommendation algorithms. The trained recommender systems would be biased towards or even dominated by those more active users. As a result, the users with less activity are more likely to receive unsatisfied recommendation results. This will give rise to the unfair treatment between user groups with different activity level. What's more, such unfairness issue could also be a reason of the system's overall performance degradation, since those less active users play the majority portion in most cases. To capture users' activity level, we explore three grouping methods through observable information to distinguish users into different activity level, including their number of interactions, total consumption capacity, and the maximum consumption level. The reason for exploring these three methods is that we believe the difference of user interactions and consumption power will reflect their different activity level in a reasonable manner. Since usually users who interact with the e-commerce platform more actively will tend to make more purchases, show higher consumption capacity, and have greater consumption budget. Next, we aim to motivate fairness concerns by conducting data-driven observational analysis to show the unfair performance of current recommender systems. We aim to show two facts. The first one is that those users with much more interactions or much higher consumption only account for a small proportion of users. The second fact is that the average recommendation quality on this small group is significantly better than that on the remaining majority of users for all baselines. We do some data-driven analysis on three Amazon review data sites, beauty, grocery, and health. The description of data are given in this table. We access the imbalanced data distribution on the three data sets. Tables one, two, and three show the user distribution in three data sets with different number of interactions or consumption. We can see that users are concentrated in areas with less interaction or less consumption. Considering such imbalanced data distribution, we select the top 5% of users in the training data set, ranked by the three methods, and label them as the advantaged group. The remaining users are labeled as the disadvantaged group. Furthermore, we show the recommendation performance of several different kinds of traditional fairness unaware recommendation algorithms on the three data sets to present their unfairness issue including the shallow models best MF and PMF, deep model neural MF, and the sequential recommendation algorithm step. Here we show the results of YF1 of this baseline on grocery in this figure. Similar trends are also observed for the other two data sites and the other recommendation quality metrics as well. We can see that although the advantaged user group only accounts for a very small proportion of users, they enjoy much higher recommendation quality than those disadvantaged users. This reflects the majority of users are easily disregarded by commercial recommendation engines, which gives rise to unfair recommendations, as well as results in degradation of the overall performance. Therefore, it is important to devise techniques to better serve such users with higher quality recommendations, to encourage them to make further interactions with the system, 
and also to improve the overall recommendation quality since the disadvantaged users are the vast majority. In order to address the unfairness concerns presented above, we provide a framework next to generate fair recommendation lists for different user groups. We first introduce the notations used in this paper. In the problem of recommendation, suppose there are user side and item side at the notation. Given recommender system, each user UI will have a top N recommend recommendation list. We define binary matrix W to denote whether an item J is recommended to item I in fair recommendation list, where W is a binary matrix. Specifically, if item J is recommended to item uh, uh, if item J is recommended to user I, then we have WIJ equals to one, else WIJ equals to zero. We use WI to represent the new top K recommendation list of user I, where the summation of WIJ from one to N is K. Next, we define the user-rented group fairness in recommender systems following these notations. Group fairness requires that the protected groups should be treated similarly to the advantaged group. In this paper, we consider grouping users as two groups according to their different activity level. The notation M is a metric that can evaluate the recommendation quality such as NDCG or F1 score. And thus we use the notation M of WI to represent the recommendation quality of user I. The user-oriented group fairness in recommendation is defined as the definition one. It requires that a fair recommendation algorithm should offer the same recommendation quality for different group of users. Furthermore, we use the difference of average recommendation performance between two groups to measure the user-oriented group and fairness of a recommendation algorithm. We define epsilon fairness recommendation algorithm as definition two. In this formulation, epsilon represents the strictness of fairness requirements. So now we provide a framework which can generate fairness aware recommendation lists based on a fairness constraint re-ranking method. Given a traditional recommender system, each user UI is recommended with a top N list. Each user item pair is associated with a score SIJ, which represents the preference of user I in terms of item J. We use this system generated top N ranking list as the baseline and apply re-ranking algorithm to maximize the sum of preference scores under the fairness constraint to generate new fair top K recommendation lists. Therefore, we can formulate the opti optimization procedure of the fairness of our recommendation problem as this function. We use re-ranking strategy here by taking advantage of making no assumptions of the underlying recommendation model and offering the model agnostic flexibility. The optimization problem here can be solved as an integer programming problem. We can find the feasible solutions in this NP complete problem through faster heuristics after obtaining the item site, which is recommended and the fairness constraint, we rank the K items by their original preference score to construct the final recommendation list. Next, we will introduce the experiments part. Our experiments are performed on publicly available Amazon five core data sites. The statistics of the data sites have been introduced when we talk about motivating fairness concerns. For the re-ranking experiment, as stated before, we selected the top 5% users under each grouping type from the training set as the advantaged group and the rest as the disadvantaged group. Then we split the test site based on the two user groups and test the results. We take both shallow and deep recommendation models as baselines. We compare with two traditional shallow models, one deep model as well as one sequential model. Next, we show the performance of our re-ranking method on both of the recommendation quality and the fairness effectiveness compared with traditional fairness unaware recommendation algorithms. The tables here shows the mean results on the three data sets about dividing user groups based on their number of interactions. The same trends are found for the other two grouping methods, which are total consumption and the maximum price. The experiment's results for the other two methods can be found in our paper. 
UGF is computed to evaluate the difference of recommendation quality between the advantaged and disadvantaged groups. The original results in the table are from baselines, and the fair results in the table are from our model. The evaluation metrics here are calculated based on the top 10 predictions in the last slide. The overall performance, advantage performance, and disadvantage performance are calculated on the whole test set, the group of advantage users in the test set, and the group of disadvantage users in the test set, respectively. Comparing advantage and disadvantage groups and the four baselines, we can find that there is a big difference in recommendation performance between the two groups. Take the results of new MF on grocery as an example. In this table, the difference of NDCG at 10 between two groups is 32%, and the difference of F1 at 10 between two groups is 24%. Such disparity could be caused by that the advantage users may dominate the learning algorithm, and thus the disadvantaged users are more likely to receive best recommendations due to their insufficient training data, which results in extremely unfair treatment by the system. From this table, we can see that our re-ranking method also have the ability to significantly reduce the fairness disparity, as well as improve the overall recommendation performance of all baselines. Although we sacrifice some of the average recommendation performance of the advantaged users, the constraint that decreases the disparity between two groups substantially improves the performance of the disadvantaged group, which accounts for much more users than the advantaged users. The total performance compromise of the advantage users is much smaller than the total improvement of the disadvantaged users, which is the reason why the overall performance gets boosted. From definition two, we know that the smaller epsilon is, the fairer our model will be. So in this section, we study how the value of epsilon in equation two can influence the performance of the overall advantage group and the disadvantage group. Take the performance of fair neural MF on the grocery data set as an example. The figure here shows how recommendation quality changes with the degree of relaxation of fairness requirements. The same trends are found for the other grouping methods, which can be seen in our paper. From the figures, we can see that the more stringent the requirement of fairness is, the more performance reduction of the advantaged group, and the more performance improvement of overall and the disadvantaged group. And the recommendation quality of these three groups will be almost the same when we set epsilon to zero. Therefore, there may be a trade-off between pursuing fairness and reducing the sacrifice of the advantaged group users under some scenarios, although we can still get improvements on the overall performance. And here we come to the conclusion. In this work, we study the problem of fairness in recommendation algorithms from the user perspective. Specifically, we explore three methods to group users into advantage and disadvantage groups in commercial recommendation systems according to their activity level. We first conduct a data-driven observational analysis on three Amazon data sites with several shallow or deep recommendation algorithms to show that users who interact more activity with platforms only account for a small proportion of users in data. However, the recommendation quality for these advantaged users is significantly higher than those disadvantaged users, which gives rise to unfair issues in recommender systems. The unfair treatment between different groups of users can also reduce the overall performance since the less active users are in the majority. We then quantify unfairness at the group level and provide a fairness constraint re-ranking method to mitigate the unfairness between advantaged and disadvantaged groups while maintaining the recommendation quality. Our extensive experiments show that our method can reduce the unfairness between advantaged and disadvantaged groups significantly and also improve the overall recommendation quality. More details and some related words can be found in our paper. Thank you for listening.